Let's do some news! My name is Mike B. Today's date is January 24th, 2019. Before you ask, yes, I know this shirt is amazing. I got it at PAX South in San Antonio last week, and it was awesome. Um, I really, yeah, just, just to kind of, I wasn't really planning on talking too much about PAX South, but I did have a good time. Um, I, we, uh, uh, the, the, it's, it's a smaller convention. It's one of the smaller conventions. Um, what the fuck, you guys? <laughs> Sorry, excuse my co-host. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's one of the smaller PAX conventions, but, um, but, uh, but still it was, uh, just, just, I think just the right amount of, like, you know, content, so if you want to go for, like, a day or something like that, you could totally knock out so much in a day. Just don't make that day Saturday, because that day is really fucking busy. Make it, like, the Friday or the Sunday, um, and, or definitely go the Sunday, because, uh, as I was, as we were walking around, one of the, like, 15... Uh, gaming chair booths were like trying to make deals on getting rid of their chair supply because they wanted to get rid of all their stock before they actually went back home because they have to ship the ship back, right? Uh, so if you want a good deal on a chair, then well, drive, I guess, like bring a truck down to uh, Pack South on the last day. So, what do you guys, man? Fuck, this is, I don't know what they're talking about. Salami, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> so let's see. First up, first up. This just happened. This just happened. Seriously, right before the stream here. Uh, we had the DeepMind AI Alpha Star 1v1 uh, Liquid TLO and uh, I was going to say Neo. <laughs> uh, Liquid Mana. Uh, mana. Uh, and it was pretty interesting. This is basically AI going as this is just B-roll here from the actual stream earlier today. You're watching the perspective of um, Legend of Mana. Yeah, <laughs> we'll call him Neo from this this uh, this point forward here um, because and we'll get to that. Uh, what's really interesting about this, and I know there's probably not a whole lot of you that are like super into. Um, we'll turn this up just a little bit, get a little bit of uh, background noise here. Uh, what's really interesting about this is what they did was they took they took this AI they've been working on. And they, uh, they put it through, like they said, 200 years worth of like StarCraft matches, right? They basically just fed it replays. They, 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 they pit them against each other. Uh, and they did all this stuff to try to, for like, for mostly for like good players, right? That it, I guess they didn't necessarily take like, you know, like bronze level or anything like that. Um, they basically fed it all a bunch of like good high-ish level games. Uh, and then they, they pit them against each other internally to see like which ones were the best, how they could like kind of flesh out a little bit more, you know, whatever. Um... And then, and then they had this, uh, this event happen today on Twitch, on uh, twitch.tv slash StarCraft, where they actually put, uh, the AI against, um, two professional players. Now, the AI only knows, uh, Alpha Star is the name of the AI, so Alpha Star only knows one map, and only knows how to play with and against Protoss. So, because that's, that's how much, um... Like that's 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 how long it takes to train it, right? Uh, and is that I wonder if it won? I wonder if it won. I know, I know. Uh, it did. It it won ten fucking times in a row. It won ten fucking times in a row, which is fucking crazy. Now, first off, it did play against a uh, TLO, and a TLO is primarily a uh, I think he's a Zerg player. So uh, Protoss wasn't a his forte, but still, still. I'm pretty sure that TLO could probably mop the floor with 90% of people that play Protoss. Um, maybe not 90% of pros, obviously, because those are people that specialize in Protoss. Uh, but still, just given his overall skill level, I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably higher than most people that play. Um, and so, <laughs> wrecked by a toaster. And so, <laughs> uh, and so then they brought in, so they're like, all right, we're going to bring in the big guns, right? So then they brought in uh, Neo, and Neo, uh, Mana, basically um, uh, lost. What the fuck? I thought I turned that shit off. Damn it. Buffy, hey, we got to start over now. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do have to actually pause that. Um, thank you, Buffy, by the way. <laughs> I don't think I even said thank you. I was talking about StarCraft. That's right. All right, so. <sighs> So that's right. So one of the interesting things that uh, that comes whenever what comes of this is that you know you have a non-player, a non-human player uh, uh, competing against a player is that you're going to get 
you're going to get techniques and strategies that uh, that maybe you haven't seen before. And so uh, in, in the early AI tests where they basically had um, uh, where they had uh, professional StarCraft players play against um, uh, against the AI, the AI was making just dumb mistakes, right? Like just really dumb mistakes. Uh, so they basically keep you keep feeding it, keep refining it, keep feeding it, and everything, and eventually they come up with something that uh, um, that's something that resembles a little bit more of a pro professional player. And Artosis was actually uh, one of the one of the casters on here, and he even said himself several times that if you didn't tell me, uh, if you didn't tell me uh, any any different, then I would assume that this was an actual player, a human player uh, playing and competing in this. Um, and so one one of the one of the interesting things that that uh, the AI did that nobody in the professional league does uh, is he basically oversaturated his um, uh, his resources at his natural. So basically at his at his normal at his starting base, uh, typically you only have like eighteen units, right? Gathering units it could be probes, it could be uh, it, it could be um, um, uh, uh, SEVs, it could be whatever, right? Uh, and so. You usually only have like 18 or something like that uh, that would basically mine and anything more than that is just giving you slightly it's a little bit a little bit more to the point to where it's like okay now you're not getting any extra uh, uh, minerals or resources and so what the AI, AI was doing was it's actually cranking up to 24 probes uh, which is a fucking lot and nobody really wants to like oversaturate like that because you end up spending resources on building probes instead of building an army but I guess the uh, what people are trying now trying to analyze people are trying to analyze like why was it doing this uh, and what people have come up with is that uh, and again this just happened so there's probably more analysis coming you know later from actual professional players but what it seems like is that the AI was so confident in being able to use its small army to uh, to defend against any kind of all in or whatever that it basically was just like, eh, I'll just go ahead and do this. Basically, the AI was cocky, right? And then, of course, like Martha said, he has no no fear of ramps. Like the, the it was basically just just running up and down ramps forever. Just just <laughs> just no fear whatsoever. Get I mean, getting split and everything and losing, but still, it just kept on bringing more and more and more uh, uh, to just continue to like reinforce, and it just kept on playing the ramps. It does does not give a fuck about the ramps. So. So more than likely what I end up saying is we're going to see uh, more people kind of take a look at this. So, okay, maybe we can like build a whole lot more uh, probes and whatnot. So because it was doing things that a typical, like some of these strategies were strategies uh, atypical of an actual player, a uh, human player, then um, that actually threw off a lot of the, uh, threw off the pros. And so that's why ultimately uh, the AI won 10 matches in a row. And then in the live match, uh, uh, Mana actually did the same thing. We oversaturated his his minerals, and then uh, did a uh, he basically did some uh, uh, a two pilot was a two pilot harassment. I think he did. We basically he basically worked the AI and uh, he he tricked the AI was AI was something that he that the AI was not uh, uh, um, able to basically defend against. Didn't understand how to defend against, and it was probably just because. It didn't have um, previous experience using it. Somebody in, in the Reddit in, in the Reddit comments said uh, that this technique that Mana used was actually super old, which would probably make sense because they're only fe they're not feeding this this thing the history of the best StarCraft plays that have ever happened. They're just feeding it what the current meta is based off of the uh, the BlizzCon patch from last year. So, so yeah, it's it's pretty it's a pretty interesting. Uh, it's, it's, the whole thing is like fucking fascinating, like seeing an AI just do this well with strats that previously were just basically like, oh, well, you know, like satur oversaturating your uh, your minerals. It's like, oh, well, who like, why would you do that in a professional game? Well, this is the AI is doing it. And it's it's obviously does the numbers better than you. Uh, but yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, let's see. So so that that happened earlier today. I thought that was, I was pretty excited about that. I do like Starcraft, though. So, you know, forgive me. Um, the mic, the micro was really insane. The micro was fucking insane. Uh, and that's another that's another thing that the AI has as a as a benefit versus the human player is that its clicks are always precise. Now it they did limit they did limit the APM. Uh, I don't think they said exactly to what they limited it to, but uh, they did uh, bring it down to. But it was like it was like probably 300 max. I want to say it was like 284, 300, somewhere around there. It was like floating around 300, give or take. Now the actual the 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 overall. I don't know about StarCraft two, but in StarCraft one, the average pro player does uh, more than 300. It's more actually like 400 or so, uh, probably like 350 or so, probably on average. And if they're microwing something, then they're probably up to like 400 or something like that. Um, I want to say too that their actual APM, their APM uh, uh, meter 
did not take like an open uh, the window for actually polling was actually a little short so you saw like really weird spikes so when when TLO started playing his APM was like 1200 at times but then it dropped back down to something reasonable so I think that they're like rolling window for polling for that APM actually was a little bit tight uh if you watch like I watch I'm right now I'm watching um uh uh uh, ASL Starcraft one, and they take a longer window. So that way the APM graph actually makes a little bit more sense. It's not so much, so many spikes. It's actually a little bit smoother. Um, highest APM you saw for the AI was 568. Yeah. But, but for the most part though, it did keep it, um, uh, pretty much around like 300 or so. So it was, it's very, but the thing is like, it's, it's an efficiency thing too, right? So if it's doing less than 300, every single one of those clicks is, is an efficient is an efficient click. It's not like so when pros play, a lot of times they like roll their clicks as they move something, right? So it's like if they click on something and they want to move like a they want to move a unit, they would just go and go and kind of click on a line, da da da, because they just gotta roll their clicks into it. Um, whereas that's like two or three clicks that the AI doesn't have to make because it knows exactly where it's gonna put it. So the clicking is much more efficient, which makes its micro even more impressive. Because then in like in like a thick ass army of whatever, it's able to pick out things with efficiency. So that's something that they have that the AI has a, a that's an advantageous over the human players. Um, so, I mean, if, obviously, if they unleashed it and let it basically make as many uh, as many actions as it wanted, then that's going to be the you know, it's going to completely mow down everybody. That's that's a given. So they have to figure out what the balance is uh, for that. So that's it about Starcraft 2. I thought that was super fucking interesting. Uh, if you guys want to watch the VOD, I'll include the link, uh, the, uh, the link to the VOD below. You guys can go and watch that APM 99 b bazillion. Yes, exactly. Uh, let's see. Next up. Next up. Let's see what we got here. Da -da -do 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 -do. Next up, we have uh, <laughs> Farming Simulator. Speaking of esports, Farming Simulator is getting its own esports league. Uh, let's go and turn this over. You hear the laughing here. Uh, I found. I just found a, uh, a compilation video here. Far Farming Simulator 15 Funny Moments. Uh, I figured it makes a pretty good uh, uh, B-roll for this. But yes, they're getting their own esports league. Large Farva. That's a fucking great name. Is that this guy's fucking YouTube channel? Fucking great. Hell yes. Large Farva. Fuck. <laughs> Punch the size of your face for free. Um, anyway, so the so farming Simul simulator is getting its own esports league. Two hundred and eighty thousand dollars is the prize pool. Two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. The money has been put up by the developer. I don't believe that this this is going to be part of the uh, the actual esports uh, uh, competition. I don't think so. But <sighs> be right back. Yeah, get get real good, Shizzle. <laughs> like <laughs> start practicing. I mean, this is the game. I mean, I don't understand like uh, what the I, I guess like, I guess I could kind of understand the draw because we've played games similar to it. That's basically just like, you know, relatively repetitive, boring, slow, whatever. Um, but uh, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so big corn pushing their agenda. I know. I know. What the hell? Uh, so you can look forward to that sometime soon. But I, I will definitely watch this. Actually, two hundred eighty thousand dollars total prizes. Um, the, uh, the winner, the winner takes home $110,000. Uh, the, it says once the regular season has concluded the teams with the most points earned, actually, let me, let me roll back a little bit here. According to the company's tournaments will be held at major gaming events like Gamescom and Paris Games Week. Each event will allow teams and players to earn circuit points and win prizes. Once the regular season has concluded, the teams with the most points gathered will earn, uh, uh most points earned will gather at FarmCon 2020. To crown the farming simulator champion, the winner will take home $110,000 in prizes. <sighs> the company tested the waters last year with a farming simulator championship series and has uh, operated competitive events within uh, with the game at agriculture related events. So like John Deere Con, right? <laughs> <laughs> like they they're out there uh i guess having a competition and you know like so i don't know if you guys know this but just recently uh there was a uh a racing sim player who raced in an actual formula e which is the electric indy cars right the electric f1 cars um they raced he raced in formula e against an actual professional driver and one 
This is a sim, a sim racer played against an actual racer and won. So it makes me wonder then, will actual farmers <laughs> and ranchers, uh, <laughs> will they fare better than uh, their gaming counterparts? Uh, in this, in the, in this, uh, these situations. I don't know how true to life farming sim is. I don't, I don't, I don't know. What the hell are these guys doing? <laughs> but, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but, and also, I wonder what the actual, uh, controls are gonna be. Like, because, I don't know if you guys have seen some people's, uh, some people's, uh, um, uh, farming simulator setups are, like, actual, like, cockpits, man. Like, they have buttons and shit. This is not farming simulator we're watching right now. This is this is the Dukes of Hazard. This is uh let me see. Let me let me look up uh farming simulator setup. There we go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, shit like this, basically, is what people uh and I don't know I, I don't know if this is what they're gonna race with, right? Or what a race. <laughs> if what they're gonna compete with. But yeah, there's dedicated farm sim controllers. Yes, yeah, so of course there is. Of course there is. This sim requires you to read weather clouds, they'll they'll be in trouble. Yeah, no, it's um uh, this is pretty, pretty incredible. Like, why not just get VR at this point? Like, I mean, seriously, this is just ridiculous. Gotta get that radio. Yeah, <laughs> is, is that a Momo? <laughs> it's like a Momo racing wheel <laughs> for, uh, for this. Oh, man. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at the... That's crazy. Why not become an actual farmer at that point? I mean, I guess, I guess money. <laughs> I know with this much money spent though, you know those you know these machines cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Like these actual like farming machines you see, like the big ass ones, like two hundred eighty thousand dollars. I know this because I know this from that uh, um from that Polly Shore movie uh, where he like dates a uh, the daughter of some farmer or something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, I remember he like he took that thing for a spin, took one of those machines for a spin. And the guy was like, that thing cost $280,000. I was like, bitch, what? $280,000? What the fuck? And movies would never lie. So I believe, I believe that that's exactly how much it costs. Um, using Polly Shore for a news reference. That's how, that's how we learn things, guys. From, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm sure, I'm sure it's real. I'm sure it's true. <laughs> but let's see. Son-in-law. Thank you, Tayshia. Thank you so much. That's a lot of beer money. I don't think I could do that and be okay without drinking. Yeah, see? That's the problem. That's a lot of money, man. Uh, let's see. Next up. Next up. This was actually kind of interesting. Um, and, and I have to warn you, I'm not... Uh, my, 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 my World of Warcraft knowledge is, uh, is, is, is definitely waning a little bit. Uh, I don't play a lot of WoW anymore. I always go through like these big like year-long, year, two year-long breaks, right? Well, I think like last year, I think we played a little bit. We, played, we leveled a new character up from, uh, from zero to whatever. Um, and then we play something of another character. So we did, we logged some time, but for the most part, I don't really pay attention to like end game stuff because raiding is boring, but raiding drama is not boring. Uh, World of Warcraft will launch a new content patch, uh, that has a new raid tier. Uh, and yes, magic. That's right. Magic. Oh, that was such a great name for her too. Uh, so they released a content patch and in it, they, uh, the players noticed that there was a, um, there was an item, or a couple items, available through quests uh, on the Alliance side that were not available on the Horde side. And these items gave uh, the players, uh, the player characters, uh, it was, well, they are 400 eye level items, which is something that are, it's basically equivalent to, I guess, the uh, whatever the heroic level of gear is. And so getting one obviously gives you a little bit of an edge. Getting an entire guild to get one is like giving a shitload of heroic pieces uh to everybody that's a fucking lot this is not a drop this is not like oh i have to raid and then uh maybe i'll get this drop no this is a quest this is a, one of the quests is uh let me see and this one's this one's this is pretty difficult you know this one's pretty crazy uh kill 25 horde players that's one of the quests they have to do so literally they just have to kill 25 horde players and they get a 400 item thing it doesn't matter how good or bad you think the Alliance or the Horde is when it comes to PvP on your server or on your whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter what that is. Eventually, everybody will get 25 kills, especially when they party up and they basically just mob around and everything in war mode. So, um, 400 is beyond Mythic of last tier, so it's still good uh, new for the new tier. Yeah, so so we have guilds like, uh, like Limit. Limit is the number one uh, North American raiding guild. Um, they actually faction transferred 
Uh, initially, it was thought that their entire guild and all of their alts all faction transferred, and people were basically throwing out numbers like, oh, they spent $9,000 on, on transfers. They did not. They actually uh, transferred 51 characters. Uh, and so 51 characters uh, equates to times whatever the amount is. It's basically $1,500 or 12 million gold. 12 million gold to a raiding guild is not really a whole lot, but that money had to come from somewhere. Uh, Blizzard will balance it within a month. Yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be too late by then. These guys will already have all those uh, all these pieces. It's not just one piece. It's three pieces that they're going to be able to get um, courtesy of this. The new guild, the new guild they created when they transferred over uh, is actually called uh, This Game is Bad. So if if they do manage to uh, get <laughs> if they do manage to get uh, uh, number one, I'm gonna be rooting for them, man, because if they do manage to get first uh, in the uh, in, in the race for this uh, uh, for this content here, uh, I, I, I I'm yeah, I, that would just be great. That would just be fuck. They won't as usual. Come on, come on. But they have the gear advantage now. Well, they have the gear advantage versus if they were playing against themselves on Horde. But if everybody else is, uh, is it method methods alliance, right? Or are they? Um, I can't actually. I don't know because I don't follow that. But yeah, that's pretty. Um, that's pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> that they actually all faction transferred just for this. They're a horde. Okay, I seem to recall at some point during the history they they went to uh, uh they switched to alliance for some reason, but I could be wrong. Um, they have the start advantage and still lose, right? I mean, they might, they might, they might actually still uh, um, end up losing, but. I mean, I I find I, mean, I find that almost difficult to believe. If if these guys are really that good, uh, I feel like having a you know having a, a gear advantage on three pieces of gear uh, times you know fifty one players, giving them you know one hundred and fifty three four hundred eye level pieces of gear to divvy up against you know with all their crew, and that's guaranteed. This is guaranteed loot. It's a fucking quest. It's a quest reward. It's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not a random drop. Uh, then, uh, and if they still lose, then, um, then that'd be pretty sad. But, but, you know, and, and you know, they're, 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 um, at least they tried, I guess. So, yeah, I just, I thought, I felt like this one was kind of, uh, was kind of interesting because I know that from what I've read, uh, in this article on Reddit and everything, um, it seems that. Because of the, I guess because of the horde racials, which, which actually the uh, limits guild leader actually said that it was not an issue with with racials, but, um, but I guess because of horde racials, people roll horde uh, for their rating stuff, and so because horde has a little bit of an advantage, then um, the alliance getting a four hundred eye level gear, people think that that's just Blizzard basically giving throwing the alliance a bone. And in the QA earlier this morning. Uh, Ian talked about possibly kicking that four hundred eye level down to three eighty five going forward. Yeah, possibly, possibly. So, so if, if and here's the thing too, like if if he does, if they do uh, uh, knock it down to three eighty five, then I guess this you know twelve million, twelve million gold that they that they spent was basically all for not, it was just for nothing. Uh, and that's really that's also a little fucked up. Um, but. Because of how long, you know, it took I me. Mean, this was like, I pulled this news, like, it was January 24th, so this is, uh, well, this is today. But uh, I pulled this news originally, probably, was it yesterday morning, two days ago or something like that? Um, and so it's, I feel like, if if they're like, oh, yeah, we're probably going to kick it down to 385 going forward. No, they should have already hotfixed it down to 385 and, like, and then be like, okay, yeah, we made a mistake. We're going to do that. But that's, you know, maybe going forward. Great. So it's like the second, the second, the reset, uh, happens and they're able to basically get in there and get further based because of the gear that they currently have. Um, then, you know, whatever, but, uh, Oh, world of Warcraft. I miss talking about you. <sighs> Let's see. Um, Blizzard's been doing weird things. The new raid will be on. Oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, someone that plays Alliance and thus did the quest mention Thursday. Today was 385 weapon drop for the daily. So far this week, Alliance has had, uh, access to get two 400 pieces and three 385s. And this is like, this is like a fresh 120 can pick these up. This isn't like, you know, something you have to like tear yourself into. Like this is like a fresh, a fresh you could pick it up. Uh, Ian said they wouldn't change it out from under Alliance this week. See, so already they're giving people, uh, you know, see, this, this should have just hot fixed it if they're going to fix it. Just hot fixed it and that's it. Me too, Rooster. Um, let's see. In other news, 
kind of, I guess, related to Blizzard. Speaking of Blizzard. And, and, and Black Sand Gaming, actually. Yeah, pretty much uh, uh, just called it out. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 head writer has left CD Projekt Red to join Blizzard. Uh, so Sebastian Stepien, I believe, uh, was he was, says he's also the creative director on Witcher 3. It should also note that he also helped with uh, Witcher 1 and 2. So this is not somebody who's only been with the company for a little while. Uh, he actually uh, had a, uh, a role in the development of pretty much all of City PR's uh, major <laughs> releases in the past uh, decade plus. And um, but what but what you should note before you don't don't go all r slash diablo on me on this all right uh this probably means that his job is done yeah this is what incogni said like it probably means that his job is done uh at cdpr and now he's uh moving on to whatever the next thing blizzard wants him to work on which is not going to be diablo 4 i assure you i <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I have, I have, I should have no idea. I have no idea. Maybe, maybe he's working on it. Uh, but we'll have no idea. It's, it's funny because R slash Diablo thinks that literally everything that happens at Blizzard is because they're trying to, uh, get Diablo four worked on. And, uh, and I'm telling you, it's probably, it's probably not the case. It's probably not the case. It's probably more or less, um, uh, Blizzard working on new properties as they very specifically have stated in the past. Joining a sinking ship. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if he has nothing left to do at uh, at CDPR, then getting poached or joining for on, on his own volition or whatever, um, joining uh, Blizzard is not a bad idea. Just kind of keep the money rolling in. I'm sure I write a mean story for our next mobile game. Yeah, people don't realize how late the, the writing comes together in games. Uh, yeah, the general core of it, you know, obviously gets moving throughout the entire thing, right? I mean, you, you come up with the core of the game, the, 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 the plot um the universe and everything you build all that stuff and then you kind of flesh out with like you know your quest and missions and like small talk and all that good stuff uh, as you go starcraft 3 calling it now i do you think star i don't think starcraft 2 is uh uh is dated enough for starcraft 3 i don't feel like we're, we're really ready for a starcraft 2 or, or 3 uh, i think starcraft 2 or maybe another expansion or something like that would be fine but uh i don't think we're gonna get a starcraft 3 um Anytime soon. Not until like 2022 or something like that. Um, for those interested, there is no news on the lawsuit with CDPR and the Witcher author guy yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, new Call of Duty storyline. Yeah, I mean, they, they, so Cyberpunk 2077, it's probably just good news for them because that just means that the game is probably fleshed out enough that uh, uh, they don't necessarily need their head writer. It doesn't say that he was, you know, fired or anything like that. It just says that, oh yeah, he, you know, he, he left to go work at, at Blizzard. Probably uh, on whatever new project they have coming out. There are a few devs going over that the other day. They were talking about the writers being basically the last people to work on the game because they had to try bringing together all the elements after tons of shit was cut and moved around by devs. Uh, he can start writing StarCraft 3 now. <laughs> yeah, they can't work out for four years. That's true. That's true. Yeah, he yeah, might be able to. Um, I mean, especially if he's already worked on... Well, he's worked on a variety of things. I mean, you, you've got um, uh, uh, you know, High Fantasy with uh, The Witcher, and then you have... Um, cyberpunk <laughs> with cyberpunk 2077 uh so he's clearly flexible well we don't know really know how the story plays out in uh cyberpunk 2077 but uh but let's just assume that you know given the success of witcher 3 probably wasn't partially due to his work uh so we could probably say that he's talented enough to to crank out a uh, um uh, some decent writing for whoever he goes and works with um and mike warham just left blizzard <laughs> well we already know what happened there uh warcraft 4 and some warcraft 4 is not gonna happen wow 2 is not gonna happen if anything it's just going to mobile you guys know ion ion has this new mobile game right you guys know this hold on let me see if i can find a video to play it for you guys um let me see do, 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 do. what is it called is it ion immortal <laughs> uh let's see ion mobile game <laughs> let's see legends of war that's what it is uh here we got gameplay here let me go pull this up open this up here let me see. Turn this up. What, is there actual gameplay in here? Hold on, I'm trying to find actual gameplay for ticket over here. There we go. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, Ion Le Legions of War. Legions of War. Ion Low. And so it's a mobile game. Although this one actually seems like these buttons seem a little big for a mobile game. Uh, this is probably is this iPad? This is iOS. So it's probably a tablet or something like that. But the um. 
But the actual, well, hold on a second. Is this right? Is this right? I just pulled this up, but this doesn't seem right. Yeah, July 27, 2007. This is Android, iOS, Nintendo Switch gameplay. Uh, this is actually the name of the site. Uh, but yeah, so this is iPad. It's probably iPad gameplay or something. But yeah, something to look forward to, I guess, if you guys are into Ion still, somehow. Ion low. How, how can you tell this Ion or, wait, how can you tell it is Ion or Diablo Immortal? With my eyes, Ains. With my eyes. <laughs> uh, it looks like Lineage Mobile MMO that is also released by NCSoft. Oh god, this is gonna be another like uh, lawsuit battle between uh, these guys. Is there a Terra Mobile coming out? We just want to just keep the lawsuits rolling for like decades. Why not? Blue stack recording? Yeah, that's probably why it looks like shit. Um, actually, it's probably exactly what it is. Uh, that would explain the uh, the resolution and the UI uh, scaling and everything. Um, does this have an awesome trailer that doesn't look like anything like it, but looks hella cool? Yes, it does actually. It does have an awesome trailer. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, trailer, if I can find a trailer. I don't know if I trust this shit. This is Ion 2. Oh, is that, it's like a loop? Oh, it plays like loops. Yeah. Yeah, see? But you know it doesn't look like this. <laughs> it don't look like this. PC games don't look like this. <laughs> Whoa, angels! Wait, have you ever Black Side? Have you ever played uh, Ion? Uh, that's their. If you didn't know, actually, because Ion is an old game. Uh, if you didn't know, um, uh, Ion, uh, Ion's characters, their whole like spin on mounts. They use uh, uh, wings. The characters have wings, so they basically like jump off of uh, small ledges and everything, and then shh, and do that. Saying good CG. I know, I saw the- here's the thing. I saw this trailer and I was like, oh shit, I even tweeted out. I was like, I was like, oh man, time to like dust off all this bias I've accumulated over the last 10 years, right? I was like, yeah, let's just jump into it. I was excited about it. And then I read the comments and it was like, fucking, it's it's a mobile game. And I was like, really? Because it doesn't say anywhere, if this is the trailer that I saw, uh, it didn't say anywhere that there, there was a mobile game. It just said eye on two like this. And that's it. And then there's what this shit is at the end. So yeah. Yep, I have bought Ion before it was free to play. I def oh, sorry, you definitely know. I'm just making a joke about the girl. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, well, I, I figured you probably joking. That's why it's like, just generally speaking, I know that some of you guys probably haven't played it. Um, let me see. Let's see. So yeah, that was that was a little tangent there. Ion 2 and Blade Soul, Blade Soul 2 confirmed mobile exclusives. Oh, fucking course. Oh, fucking course. <sighs> Uh, sigh. Next up, Planet Side. Uh, two. I was gonna say two. Sorry. Uh, Planet Side Arena. Planet Side Arena is actually coming to beta here soon. If you guys are uh, interested, i you know honestly I am interested in um in Planet. I like Planet Side too. I really do. Uh, there's a bit of repetitive to uh, repetitiveness to it. But overall, I I feel like I had a lot of really great memories and just shit that we did in that game. Um, especially when you look at um, like the the planets, the the plan the planet side FNGs, the uh, the the series where it was like Chisel and I and everybody else uh, playing like that. I watched some of those and it's just like, oh man, so many good memories in Planet Side Two, despite not really playing a hardcore. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Planet Side Two, Planet Side Arena. Uh, is a, um, it's, I guess it's just, it's a, what's a multiplayer, um, BR is one of the modes. It's just basically, it's an arena game, which is funny, and I'm gonna mention this every single time it comes up, but I've said before that, uh, that all these battle royales are just last man standing on a large scale, and it's only a matter of time as the maps get smaller and smaller, because some of these new games are like, oh, we got a smaller map, right, PUBG new maps, oh man, it's super small map and people are like oh man it's fights all the time it's like really bitch this is a fuck this is like regular ass arena shooter just regular ass arena shooter that's it <laughs> it's just like it's just an arena shooter yeah, pretty soon it's gonna get right back and unreal tournament's gonna come back out and be popular again it's gonna happen planet side arena is the first step to that they have uh, a number of different game modes are gonna be launching with it uh and you're gonna get your first look at it close beta if you're invited to that january 30th these kids forget Quake, Halo, and, and such. Well, Unreal Tournament is uh, just as old. Um, 
Yeah, Un Unreal Shooters never went away from me either. I know, I know. And then Quake Champions comes out and dies because they did it wrong. They did it wrong, man. Uh, no one wants that class based stuff. <laughs> uh, their uh, closed beta is January 30th, which is next Wednesday, I think. Wednesday? Something like that. Yeah, next week. Um, their founders, if you're a founder, you could start February 20th. So February 20th, you could get in uh, if you have the Founders Edition. I'll be honest, I might do that. I don't know. Anthem's coming out like the same day, isn't it? So February 22nd or something like that. Um, so that's going to be a tough one to, to like flip a coin for, especially because I already know that 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 uh, Planet Side is at least average. I already know that Planet Side, the Planet Side in general is at least average. It's going to be average, at least. At the very minimum, it's going to be average. Uh, but Anthem could potentially be shit. We don't know. Some of the some of the reviews are coming back already. Or I guess the previews uh, where they're saying, um, "I don't, I don't yet, Shizzle, but Star Blitz actually uh, messaged me. I didn't have an opportunity to get back to her that she has an invite for it, so I might actually take that. Uh, I don't really get an opportunity to play much on the weekend, so I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But um, I also have to like install Origin for that shit. I don't want to, but I. <laughs> uh, could be, could be, yeah. You don't know. Anthem could, Anthem could be awesome. It could also be less than awesome. So we know at least Planet Side or Arena will be at the at the very minimum just average. Um, the launch date, actual launch date, and this date could change is March twenty sixth this year. Uh, so if you're a founder, you'll get it a whole thirty six. No wait, uh, thirty six days before actual launch. That's a long time. That's a huge gap. That's a monster gap, guys. Like, between founders and release. Like, first off, most games don't even last longer than, you know, a week, right? They spend maybe a week in the limelight, and then they disappear. And so, to have a 36-day gap between their founders, the Early Access founders at February 20th, and their launch day of March 26th, that's pretty ballsy. Like that, that to me says that they think that the game is going to be popular enough uh, to uh, um, to last, you know, the entirety of that, and then you know get another boost when it actually launches. Uh, most most early access is like what a, a week on average, like on average, like a week. And there's probably some that are more uh, majority or less, but I would say probably a high average is say like a week uh, access or something like that. Um, or they're just gay, or or they or they're just trying to get those people that watch it, and they're like, oh man, I got to get in on this, and they buy it um, again. I will probably play it. I'll probably play it because it's planet side. I kind of feel like, you know, I got to get in and check it out. Uh, it's sci-fi. It's a shooter. So it's like, all right, it's, it's already speaking my language. Uh, it's got arena in it. So it's, it's already speaking my language. So even some more. Um, Anthem rings every single alarm bell for me. Demo version provided to the media and streamers uh, has been stated by EA to be easier and have a completely different economy compared to release version. Well, the easier part makes sense because uh, because most journalists are bad. At video games, but um, a completely different economy in terms of like what they're gonna have in their uh, cash shop and all that. Is that what you're, you're speaking to? Like the how they earn currency in game and also uh, how that's spent in cash shop. So that's gonna be, yeah, that's gonna be uh, interesting if the, if it's that you know dis decidedly different. Uh, streamers will help boost the sales for anthems. EA has to invest in streamers. Yeah. Um, let's not forget the Doom review. Yeah, I know. Oh man. Oh man. Doom has like some of the most fluid like combat mechanics ever. It's like so hard to fuck that up, and they somehow managed to fuck that up. It's crazy. Uh, it's kind of like out in my head, I could I could see the video of them like almost like keyboard turning the the, the thing and just missing every shot and just just hurting my feelings. Uh, man, yeah, really. As the build is different from the final build, they locked that uh, locked what the demo was a while back and cleaned it up. Uh, and the end balance of the main is still being worked on, not the same build. So not everything is about Des being evil. Yeah, I mean, it's true. She's right. It's true. Like, you know, we don't know what the, uh, um, I guess we don't know. We don't know what the live version is going to be versus the, you know, whatever the demo was. But uh, it is, uh, as somebody who has attended a lot of these press events where we get to play like a chunk of a game, uh, uh, an example would be Star Wars, um, uh, 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 The Old Republic's, uh, right? Sotor, yeah, Sotor. Um, I was there for the Sotar demo and they had accelerated XP gain, I think is what they had turned on for us. And so we were getting a lot of XP able to like, you know, level up and, uh, uh, you mess with the tech, the tech tree and all that good stuff. So we all do a lot of stuff in a short period of time. Um, so yeah, it's not unusual. It's not unusual, uh, to have 
a kind of siloed instance where it's basically like a little small playground for press people to run around and do all this stuff. Um, yeah, exactly. It's primarily to show off the ability mechanics and see how the loop goes. Problem is, the game not being presented to reviewers, uh, it makes the entire review pointless because it's no longer the same game. Well, I, I don't think that's entirely... I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but um, those should should be like... I mean, if, there's, if it's stated that it's a press preview, then like a press event, then that's that's something that uh, that the the reader should take into account. The reader should take it. Account. I mean, if, as long as they state it's like, oh, it was a, it was a press event, you know, it was a preview. Then as the reader, uh, you should recognize, like, okay, cool. They probably have a slightly different uh, uh, version of the game that they're playing. A, again, a siloed uh, version. The review copies are supposed to be the regular game, though, not the demo version. Okay, so so okay, I I haven't seen I haven't seen these reviews that state that they got review copies. Um, I, I, I have to assume that this this early uh, we're a month we're a month ahead. I have to assume that that they got demos or a slice of the game, not the entire game, because the entire game is an online experience, right? Like, but kind of a mix. Um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't speak intelligently about what exactly they're doing, uh, Brian and Ira. But um, I can just tell you from you know historically. They always give us a a special uh, a special build of the game to check out. That's just what they do. That's what they do. Um, probably tutorial first level and some extra. Actually, usually they don't they don't give you like the first part. They usually give you something that's ahead. Of, you know, especially if it's like a press event where you only have limited time. They'll give you um, they'll start you off at like level fifteen or something like that, like later on. So that way you can uh, uh, that way you can you experience more of the meaty parts of the game, but. Uh, you've already purchased the game. Uh, let's see. Maybe they have a pre-order game reviewer. Access. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Sure. Maybe they do. <laughs> maybe, maybe they have a special version that only they have. And, uh, fuck, who knows? I have no idea. Cause I, I don't know exactly what people are getting for Anthem. I barely even remember the Anthem even existed until two days ago because I am just like, I am just like triple A games. What, what are those? I fucking don't even care anymore. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, next up. Next up, my Stardew Valley shirt. Fuck AAA games, bitch. What's an anthem? Yeah. So the next up, you guys will love this. This is an update to a story that uh, that uh, that we covered not too long ago, uh, probably like two episodes ago. Uh, so Soldier Boy, his latest sketchy console looks like a PS Vita. So Soldier Boy has a new console. There's more. There's more. They have a new. They, he has a new console. So the first one didn't work out. The one with the Nintendo shit. Nintendo ain't gonna do shit, right? Remember that. Uh, so, <laughs> Sony isn't gonna do shit, right? Uh, <laughs> he was inspired by the Vita design. Nintendo said, no, 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 no. It's, it's so, they, they, he has, he has, uh, this game console that's coming out, right? Or that's out or whatever. Uh, that basically looks like a PS Vita. It's, uh, it says it boasts a 480 by 272 HD, HD, 272 lines. 200, 480 by 272. I can actually probably show you what that is right now. 480. So this is right now, you're looking at 1920 in width, right? From like, from basically here to all the way to the other side. I'm taking out, I'm taking out about a third of that, okay? So <laughs> I would say this is probably about the width right here. Maybe like about here, something like that. And what's the height? 272? Fuck me. That's like, so basically, Right, well, like basically this corner right here. So my belly, basically, yeah, right, right, my, my belly. Yeah, that's that's how big the the resolution is right there. It's pretty fucking pathetic. Uh, <laughs> it's nothing. Uh, so yeah, four hundred eighty by two seventy two HD. Uh, the soldier game handheld. This is so dumb. This is so stupid. Uh, his entire site. You want to see? You want to see it on the site? Check it out. We're gonna soldier soldierwatch.com. Uh, oops, something went wrong. What happened? This shop is unavailable. What can I do? Press the back button in your browser. Return to the previous page. This, the site is down. Uh, he claims, he claims that, uh, that an ex-cameraman has hacked him because he's hating. Uh, and so he claimed that an ex-cameraman <laughs> or whatever, uh, has hacked his site. Uh, he actually, he actually, um, he actually called out Shopify which I guess is the uh, the platform behind his actual uh, uh, his uh, his site. He actually accused Shopify of being uh, racist because they deemed his product to be his product and store to be a risk. 
And so he said specifically, uh, I can't believe that Shopify support and Shopify is hating on me right now. Is it because I'm black? And he says, I'll see you guys in court. Uh, I'll use another system, make millions from y'all haters. Uh, I said, I'll be speaking out on your fucked up racist system on every news outlet. So get ready. And I was like, wow, man, like <sighs> it's racist. Is it really racist? If you're like, <laughs> if you're getting busted for selling bootleg ass fucking products. Mm, I don't think that's racist. I don't know. I feel like it doesn't really matter what skin color you are. You can't sell products that are copyrighted by somebody, somebody else. You can't, a major company like that. You just can't do that. And so then I found this article from Soldier Boy, sorry, from Rolling Stone, an interview with Soldier Boy, and it says Soldier Boy wants to take over the gaming industry one console at a time. And I saw this, I saw this article header, and I was like, surely, surely they know. Surely they know it's a joke. Surely they know it's not, like, they, that's, they can't do this. And I read, I read this article, and they know, they believe it. They believe. They believe that Soldier Boy is going to take on the game, take over the gaming industry one console at a time. Now, this is an old article, but this is what I found because I want to look a little bit more into this whole, like, why is he calling Shopify racist? Because I feel like, you know, the word racist gets thrown around literally all the fucking time. Anytime you disagree with anything somebody says, you must be a Nazi or be racist or something like that. And I felt like this is one of those times. And so I scrolled through this article, this interview. And uh, let's see, da, 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 da. so he basically asked some questions, uh, and then down here, he says, what happened with the Shopify thing? There it is. What happened with Shopify? You were telling your followers on Twitter that they were racist. Can you explain what happened? Basically, when you're dealing with different companies in the business world, you're going to run into problems. That was just me giving Shopify a little smoke, giving them a little smoke and let them know who they're dealing with. But everything's resolved. I spoke with them. They fixed everything. Everything is fine. Much love to Spotify, or sorry, Shopify. I keep reading that, Spotify. Uh, I just have to give them a little smoke. Now, I'll be honest. I don't know what give them a little smoke means, but I could kind of put together what it means based on the context. So I figured, why don't I go ahead and look it up and see. We'll go to the source here. We'll go to the, the <laughs> Urban Dictionary. And it says, beef, trouble, confrontation. Why are you flexing, boy? You don't want no smoke. I was like, oh, okay. So he called Shopify racist because he just wanted to flex on them a little bit. He fucking called them racist. You guys are racist against, you know, whoever, right? Because, because, you know, just to, just to, I, just, I, was, I was just flexing on them, man. I was just, I was just, you know, I was just letting them know who's boss. Really? Really? Fucking A. Fucking A. That's why your fucking site's down. Garbage, garbage ass products. And then like, and then Rolling Stone eats it up. Like Rolling Stone's just like, oh man, this is great. Even the comments, even the comments call out Rolling Stone. It says, no, he isn't. He's selling bootleg Chinese junk. He's a clone of the guy selling burn CDs at a flea market. Nintendo will destroy him in 10, 9, 8. It's, a, it's, a, it's basically me touring. You find out about it. Uh, let's see. Charlie's, Charles Holmes, congratulations. You're a fucking idiot. That's the, the author of this article here. Uh, let's see. Uh, bless him. He really doesn't understand any of this. When is the C&D from Nintendo? This isn't just from Nintendo rolling in. Um, that's a questionable avatar. We'll go and scroll up. I don't think it's what it is, but just uh, just in case, we'll go and scroll up there. <laughs> Soldier, got to see it and see for being a racist. Editor. You're racist. You're racist because because you you're calling my product what it is. Again, a spade. We're calling a spade a spade. Like it's 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 garbage products. It's garbage products. It's a sketchy console. Everybody knows it is. He has no idea what he's doing in the games industry. Uh, I appreciate that he's trying to come in and trying to do something different, but he's not doing anything different. <laughs> he wants to. His heart is in the right place. In his wallet. <laughs> but his brain isn't there with it. So he's not actually thinking about any of his decisions. He's not actually educating himself on any of these decisions. He's just fucking making them. He's just fucking making them, man. Ridiculous. And if you think, and if you think, and if, if, if you, if you don't, if you don't uh, support him in this, then you're racist. Just kidding. I was just, I was just, I was just, uh, uh, uh I was just, uh, what is it? Uh, I was just giving you a little smoke right there. Fuck off. Fuck off. <sighs> Shop is unavailable. Oops. Something went wrong. What happened? This is ridiculous. <sighs> I think he's just getting free press because I don't think he could be that really. Yeah. I mean, like, you don't, <sighs> who knows who fucking knows. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, when you, 
not everybody is uh like I, I don't think that he's done any research on this product. I think that he was trying to he's trying to basically rebrand himself or uh, relaunch himself as as a mainstay product in today's, you know, today's technology world. Uh, and he's just maybe he reached out to a couple people, the wrong people who are like, yeah, we could just throw your name on whatever. And he was like, cool, it's totally legit because this guy that's handled my business for however long said it was totally legit. But I mean, we we know that there's tons of people who try to dabble in games who have no idea what the fuck they're doing and they make stupid decisions because of it uh kind of like uh like like u.s government <laughs> like pretty much like anytime they try to do anything uh involving gaming they just don't fucking understand they don't understand oh man so yeah let's see uh he was super enough to live stream his payments in and out of the shop for his first console and showed that he sold 95 percent of his sales at like 3 a.m the first day uh, Stu did a collab with Spyro, uh, and it was awesome. That's how you get into the games industry, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, S Snoop, Snoop did it right. Like Snoop and a couple other folks, uh, uh, celebrities, like they, they, I feel like they did it right because they're not, they're not like he's coming out with this very confrontational attitude of like, "Fuck you guys, I'm taking over this bitch," right? And I don't feel like that works. I don't feel like that works in today's in today's society, right? We can't, we're, we're all smart enough to know that that shit doesn't work. <laughs> Mr. Boy, please, Mr. Boy, <laughs> please stop. <laughs> Mr. Boy, please don't hurt him. Uh, didn't Snoop also pretend to live stream? Oh, man, yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he, like, like while playing, while playing, like, smoking a blunt, like, just, just, yes. Yes, he did. And I almost, I'm almost have, I'm almost inclined to believe that he fucking knew it. And he was just kind of like, oh, man, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I just don't give a fuck. Right. But, but this is, this is different. This is like way different than that. Like Snoop's not trying to like pitch us some garbage ass bootleg shit, uh, and then get mad when people call him out on his bullshit. Anyway, the soldier boy thing makes me upset because I feel like everyone's trying to get a piece of the games industry thing. Uh, and so they're crossing over and they're trying to dump money into things. Well, it's different when they're investing money, you know, like Shaq or something, uh, you know, investing money like that's different. Uh, then, then what, what the hell is Soldier Boy trying to do? If anything, that's what he should do. Maybe Soldier Boy should buy a fucking team. There we go. Buy a team. That's how you get your foot in the door. Give me a break. <laughs> buy a Fortnite team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fortnite. Man. Ugh. Anyways, so that's it. That's it for the news. My name is Mike B. This is chat. Uncle chat over here. <laughs> It's an it's all right. It is an entertaining garbage fire. It really is. It is a very enter I'm glad that he keeps doing this shit because I fucking love. I fucking love covering this shit. This has been this has been a shit show. <laughs> it's been a shit show. It's just this is a uh, this is Darnell to return. When did that? When did I say that? So his team would be required to use his knockoff handhelds. See you later. 2019 bit strong. Yeah. Does that bounce work? Oh, it does work over there. Awesome. Suck that large slug. <laughs> Can't wait for the end of the year review. Yeah, huh? For this new show, we could totally do that. We should do that. That'd be a good way of doing, I think. Yeah, pretty much. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys uh, later. <gasps> Bye. Did, oh, did you, did you get in that subscribe to PewDiePie right before the end there? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs>